Are you ready for an adventure? on another adventure and I've stepped out of my office into Harry's and that's above the Yarra Valley in a hot air balloon. Part, so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go on an adventure? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed my balloon ride. And I'm getting serenaded at the minute by a liar bird because I thought I'd finish off my day and come up for a walk to Tanglefoot Trails because there's liar birds here and all sorts of things. I thought I'd come and have a look. Very peaceful here. I've beat the crowds and hopefully I'm the only one that's going to be here so I can have a good experience up here as well. So yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that flight. Unfortunately, I couldn't pick the day that I was going, have some nice sun rays coming out so I could get some beautiful photographs. No, it was a, a free ride. I was invited to come along, I was told there's a vacancy for you if you want, but it's for tomorrow. So I, I took it and uh, it, I enjoyed it. But yeah, it didn't get the light to give me some great photographs. I uh, took two images just to demonstrate, you know, I'll show you what the day was like. But if we have a look at this image, yeah, if I'd have got the sun coming out onto that, would have made a totally different story. But unfortunately, without the sun, that image is nothing. It'll be deleted after I do this video. Yeah, just some rays coming onto the balloons, onto the mountain range with a bit of rain coming down on it would have made all the difference. Right, I'm gonna shut up now and go for a walk. Check this place out. I wanna film some lyrebirds if I can. Photograph them as well. Or, you know, just have a, generally have a play and finish off my day. So while I'm doing that, here's uh, behind the scenes look at uh, how I went about uh, preparing for the balloon flight with the cotton carrier. So here it is. Well thank you Derek. Yes, the uh, cotton carrier is definitely the best tool to use when you're going in a hot air balloon. There was two reasons why I chose it. One, being able to tether it so I don't lose my camera over the edge. 
yeah, definitely don't want that to happen. The other one was being able to put my batteries at hand in this little pouch at the front and a couple other things. Beautiful being able to uh, have everything at hand, having the camera tethered, very important. Now I've had this in my cupboard for over two years, so it was great to be able to pull it out and wipe the cobwebs off it. I originally bought it to be able to photograph birds in flight, being able to rest my arms while I'm waiting for another opportunity to come and then crack it out and get on with the taken photographs. But yeah, unfortunately, haven't had the opportunity to be able to do that for quite some time. So that sat in the cabin. Very handy and it worked really well. Now I use a 7D Mark II to both photograph and film with. Now I hate using DSLRs. I don't like the image at all. It's, you just can't get it to look clean and sharp like you can with a, vi a video camera. And a host of other reasons as well. But I thought for my first ever flight on a hot air balloon, this would be the way to go. Stay compact, not be a pain in the ass to people around me by having something bulky sticking on the side of me. Have it in front, perfect solution. Right, so next time that I go, now that I've got some experience with balloon flights, I know that I can use my XF400 because that's pretty compact anyway. And if I go to the outer edge of the balloon, put it on the front, have my 7D Mark II on the side carrier as well, the belt carrier. I have two of these. I bought the whole kit. And that'll definitely be the way to go. 7D Mark II on the side there with my wide angle lens on or whatever I want to use. Video camera on the front. Now I also need a microphone to get good audio for either me talking or someone beside me, whatever I wanted to do. I have to go compact as well and I don't want it falling off and yeah, losing it because I may not be able to tether it on. Perfect solution, lavalier kit, the AVX, the Sennheiser AVX lavalier kit. Worked beautifully, perfect solution for a hot air balloon ride. All right, that's all I've got for you. Back over to you, Derek. Well, I've been walking around this beautiful forest for quite some hours now and unfortunately it's not my type of forest. It's steep, very dense undergrowth except for a couple of little areas like this but it's quite steep to get down to this creek down the bottom here which does look really interesting but the thing that really catches my eye is all these trees here. I, I don't know what they're called. I've never seen them before. They have a lot of moss and other plants growing on them like staghorns and things like that. And there's a huge one just up here. And the sun, you can see it's just breaking through on it, highlighting the moss backlit. It look, they look awesome, but there's too much chaos around. I can't take any photographs but it's certainly one of the most interesting forests I've been in, up in the Dandenong Ranges, that is for sure. I'd love to get down to that creek. It is very dark down there. Actually, this, this whole forest is dark. But at the minute, I'm getting no opportunities to take any photographs. And nothing that interests me, anyway. I'm heading back to the car park. Might have a look around that area. Might get lucky. Well, what a day I'm having. A balloon ride. Then straight over to a, a forest that was nearby. Didn't work for me. I'll come home. And in my office, the fog is still here. It is midday. This is the weirdest thing. But it's going to give me a beautiful opportunity to take a nice photograph 
of what would normally be a boring track. I've taken some shots of fog in this reserve many times, but not as good as this. And it's working really well for me because the fog can stay really dark in the background because the sun's over here because it's midday. So it's lighting up my scene nicely, but the, the fog isn't re as reflective as it normally is because the sun always rises over there and it's always caused a little bit of a problem. It doesn't look as nice, but this will be nice and dark. I have the zoom lens on just to tighten things up so it's not so cluttered. It's just the track leading you down through the reserve and because it's winter bark on the ground and it's all rotting and giving it a bit more atmosphere as well. So I'm going to take a shot. We're ready to go. Two second timer. Looks beautiful. I'm going to change the lens and I'm going for a bit more of a wider shot. Yeah, might be a bit cluttered, but we'll take it and see what it looks like. Well, I've chucked the wide angle lens on, so that'll give me more of a vertical up. And same again, two second timer. Stop in the camera shake. Looking good, looking good. I might change it to landscape shot, get some more of all these ferns with their daggy bloody uh, dead ferns, frongs on them. I might do a bit of gardening first because this fog's still going to hang around for a little bit. It'd be nice if I got some shafts of light coming through, but it may not happen. All right, set up, take another shot. Ready for my third shot of the day. Wide angled shot, landscape shot. Camera set in high dynamic range mode. I want to get that fog as dark as possible. I'm on my on the third setting of high dynamic range mode. Make it dark. My mid tones will come up nicely and my shadows will come up nicely as well. Two second timer. ISA to 100. Cut down on noise. <sighs> my Aperture is set to 10 to give me better depth of field. And the shutter is in uh, one eighth of a second. Ready and off we go. There we go. Beautiful. Looking good. Probably a bit cluttered, being wide, but uh, I've given it a go. All right, so that's uh, it for the day. If you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification if you hit the bell as well whenever I do anything crazy like I did today. And if you'd like to go and have a look at my channel and look at all the crazy things I've been doing in the past, click on the icon down below. There's over 90 videos there to choose from. I might have to do a bit of housekeeping and get rid of some, I think. Cut them down. But yeah, there's plenty to go and have a browse that. There might be something there of interest here. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. <sighs> I am freezing. I am going home. It's been a cold morning. See ya.